Um, next, I'm going to start talking about specific recommendations for our major crops here in Wisconsin um, for base acres. That's just corn and soybeans are very big, and wheat um, as well as oats. Um, these in this slide here, first give the reference prices. These are the um, reference prices set by the Farm Bill. They haven't been updated. Um, they're still 370 for corn, 840 for soybeans, 550 for wheat, and 240 for oats. In addition, I also give the projected prices for 2019 and 2020. These are more recent um, projection prices than was used in the um, Gardner um, payment simulator tool put out by the University of Illinois. Um, and so they're slightly different, but you can see 385 for corn, um, $9 for soybeans, and et cetera. Um, the links are there where they come from, and um, the, the 2019 prices for, from the WASD, the World Ag Supply and Demand Estimates, may will be updated monthly, whereas those other ones for 2020 are only updated every six months. So these will be around for a while. Um, what I'm going to go through here now is first we'll start with corn, our largest crop in terms of base acres and payments, and show you the prices. Um, these, the, the blue line is the historical prices back from 2013 all the way up to 2018. And then the dotted lines for the 2019 to 2020 um, projected prices from the USDA estimates. That red line is a reference price. And so that is giving us the guaranteed price that um, the uh, PLC uses to trigger payments. And what you can see here is historical prices and um, the projected prices are all very close to that PLC line of, of reference price of 370. So you can already see that um, there's going to be a PLC, that 370 price is probably going to be a good option just by based on this graph. As you see, the 370 would have been a great price for the last few years. The other point to note, these are the marketing year average prices at the national level. These are not board of trade prices or what you yourself may have gotten. These are the historical marketing year averages, uh, average prices for corn in the U.S. So in terms of recommendations for corn base acres in Wisconsin, it's a very short answer. It's very simple. Sign up for PLC. You can run the numbers and such, and there's a payment simulators. But in general, this guarantee that PLC offers of 370 is a pretty good deal. Um, the USDA projections there are 385 and 340 in 2020. Well, having a floor of 370 is pretty good. These are expected prices. There's always a distribution around them. You know, could, even though the average may be um, 385, that's our expect expectation of harvest time prices for, well, no, I'm sorry, marketing your average prices for next year. It's still going to, there's still a lot of uncertainty, a lot of the year to go through yet. And so there's a lot of variability around it. So even though it's 385, there's still a pretty substantial probability it'll be below 370. And so that price is a good deal. And that's why PLC is my recommendation for um, corn base acres here in Wisconsin. ARC CO, the county ARC, is, has a lower average payments because its guarantee uses a percentage of historical um, county yields. And so it's sort of, they're locked into at lower levels, um, whereas that 370 for PLC is a pretty good deal. This is some, a screen capture for, I just picked Dane County, put in a PLC um, payment yield of uh, 150 and used a really high price expectation of $4, which is the highest available in the Gardner policy, um, the Gardner payment simulator. What you can see are the expected payments, PLC in blue and ARC in orange. And you can see on average, PLC pays much larger payments for these parameters and much more likely to spend um, or give payments. The average for the state at this level will be 1635 in 2019, 1630 in 2020, whereas ARC is much lower, um, 331 and 516. You also see the likelihood of a payment is about 35% for both 2019 and 2020 for PLC and um, much smaller, 11 and 13% for ARC. So it's, it's pretty clear, and you can run other, other counties and other payment yields, but in general, for I've seen for all the counties I've looked at, which is basically most of them, um, PLC is the recommendation for, for corn in Wisconsin. As your payment yields, your PLC yields go up, your average payment will increase as well, but you can see it's a very good deal. Switching now to soybeans, um, you can see here the blue line are the historical marking your average prices, and the red line is the um, reference price of 840. What you can see here is the marketing year average prices for soybeans have been above that um, reference price of 840, and they are projected to stay there as well. Um, and so there's still some uncertainty around these. These are projections. We have a lot of variability, but you run the payment tool, and surprisingly, um, there's no clear answer for Wisconsin. So my recommendation is for, um, for soybeans and base acres in Wisconsin, you need to run the tool for your county with your payment yields and use the different price forecasts available and then for each of your FSA farms, and then choose the one that gives you the highest average payments in 2019 and 2020. 
So basically the best option depends and I would sit down and use the tool yourself. We have a video on that or um, the link is available on the way main webpage or you can um, work with someone who is, uh, feels comfortable using the tool. It's all fairly menu driven and I think you can figure it out. And so um, that what the price tech, even though the price expectations are higher than the average, there's still that possibility. And so both programs will pay, but in general, the likelihood on, on average, the expected payouts are much lower than they would be for corn. Um, these tools are simulating random prices and random county yields. And so we're gonna look at some examples here. In the next three slides, I'm gonna show the effects of changing some of these parameters on the, um, the forecast and show you how it depends on which county you're in, what your payment yields are, and the price forecasts. It's very important to run these numbers for your county, for your um, payment yields, and what you think are good price expectations. This is the price forecast. We chose the same county. I chose Walworth County, a payment yield of 40 bushels per acre. We did a really high expected price on the left and a very low expected price on the right. Everything else is exactly the same. In this county, you can see um, ARC is the better deal. Um, even though um, the price expectations go from very high to very low, ARC is still the better option for um, this farmer in this case here for Walworth County. So um, this is an example of the price forecast. Here we're going to look at the county now. This is the, the one on the bottom left, or this on the left side, is still Walworth County with a 40 um, bushel per acre payment yield and 920 price expectation. The one on the right is Grant County in the other um, far um, southwestern corner of the state. What you see there, exactly the same payment yield, the same price expectation, but now all of a sudden in Grant County, um, PLC looks like the better deal. Um, and so you can see how important county is. You have to run these numbers for your county. You also can see the magnitude of the payments are quite low um, relative to what we saw for corn, particularly um, like in Grant County, they're all less than $5, both ARC and PLC. So it's not a major issue in relative to making the right choice for corn. Um, here's the last one is payment yields. So now I chose Grant County, use 30 and use 40 bushels per acre. Everything else is the same. And what you can see is going back to 30 bushels per acre, all of a sudden that ARC maybe is a better deal, but then you go to 40 and it's PLC. So again, it really depends on what your payment yields are, what county you're in, and what you think prices are going to be.